Hey, it's Mario here and in this video you're gonna learn how to reduce muscle soreness. I'm gonna give you four ways backed up by research, backed up by science that you can implement right now to feel less sore. And if you feel soreness right now, if you're experiencing that, I have a lot of empathy for you. When I first started out in my first year of training, I'd be extremely sore after my workouts, especially after leg days. I would be, uh, my range of motion was so limited. I was experiencing a lot of pain. I could barely sit on my ass, my glutes, my hamstrings, my quadriceps was super, super sore. I mean, I used to joke with people that I in a wheelchair after the leg day for a couple of days. And uh, that can definitely happen. If you've been out of the gym for a while and you come back in and you do a lot of work and all of a sudden, I mean, it just happens. You know, that's something that is a process you have to go through. But there are certain things that you can do to improve because uh, if you just let the soreness I mean, be and if you just keep going through that, it can also result in an injury as well as it can limit the amount of weight you can use. Let's say if you're not taking care of your recovery and let's say your back gets really sore and your lower back especially and you go into the next workout, that can severely limit the amount of weight you can use that will also hinder the progress. I mean, just looking at the long run. So what can we do to reduce muscle soreness? And there's a lot of different ways. And first of all, I want to debunk a little myth here that static stretching can improve and reduce muscle soreness. I mean, it definitely, uh, looking at the research and we look at the systematic review from 2002, they looked at the effects of static stretching on reducing muscle soreness and they haven't found any evidence of that. So static stretching, holding that stretch for a long time, I mean, doesn't work. This is something that a lot of personal trainers still tell their clients and something that a lot of people are still recommending around. So it definitely isn't the best tool out there if you're looking to reduce muscle soreness. I mean, static stretching can help alleviate certain pain or uh, let's say improve range of motion. I don't recommend doing it before workout because you can reduce the power output and your strain. I mean, this kind of been well documented as well. So I would not recommend doing that static stretching right before the training, but if you do it, let's say, before you go to bed and things like that, it can definitely help. So keep that in mind. So static stretching does not help reduce muscle soreness. So what does? And if we look at the four main ways that are backed up by research, the way number one, the method number one, my favorite method is actually walking. It's includes, basically increasing your blood flow. And this can be done with light cardio, with light cycling, swimming, anything basically, but keep it light, very, very low intensity. And my preferred way, as I said, is walking. This is a big part and my strategy for active recovery is to add about six to 7,000 steps every single day. And this is something that is not just beneficial for reducing muscle soreness, but in general, there's a whole number of health benefits related to walking, is improving your posture, I mean, generally becoming more active. And if you add an audiobook on top of that, if you're just walking alone, if you're walking your dog, get some brain gains as well as the reduction of soreness effect at the same time. So highly, highly recommended to implement some walking. So it's not just about going to the gym three, four, or five, or six times a week. If you're just generally inactive in the rest of your life, I mean, there's, de there's definitely something you're missing out. So you wanna get that full spectrum of different types of intensities when it comes to activity. So gym and walking at the same time would definitely be beneficial. So the second way how you can reduce muscle soreness and something that I see a lot of people starting to do now is foam rolling. There's been a few studies that have been showing influence, a positive influence and reduction of muscle soreness when you're doing foam rolling. It's a very time efficient, very easy way to do that because you can buy foam roller to your new house and you can just keep it and you can use it. Maybe your gym has one. I mean, this is something I've used as well, especially when it comes to my legs. Again, my quadriceps, we rarely get sore, but when it does, I definitely do some foam rolling and uh, for my hamstring, for my glutes. Hamstrings t tend to be the muscle group that I get sore the most, so foam rolling really helps there. And yeah, a very easy, time efficient way to do that and just get a standard basic foam roller. Uh, not a big deal, uh, very cheap, cost effective, good method. So the method number three that you can use is massage. And this is something that depending where you live, I mean, cost can be really, really high and also you wanna do some research and see what are the professionals in your area that can actually do a good massage that are uh, qualified as well. And it can help improve blood flow as well as reduce injuries in general. I mean, you wanna invest some time in recovery. And I know a lot of people are investing so much and so many resources into improving their nutrition, into improving their programs and you're doing everything right. But if you're like that intermediate, late intermediate, let's say advanced lifter, who's doing a lot of work in the gym and your nutrition is fairly optimized, I mean, 98%, I mean, look at, recovery you know how much are you investing in recovery massages like a couple of times a week as i said walking doing these things this is really the key this is the final formula for a lot, final piece of the puzzle for a lot of people is to really crack that recovery uh, blueprint and find how you can recover better and then once you do that then you really have that full 
thing that's going on where you can really recover from all that volume that you're doing in the gym and that will make you progress a lot faster. So massage can be quite beneficial, has been studied and does help reduce muscle soreness. And the fourth final way I can reduce muscle soreness is two supplements. One is caffeine, the second one is omega-3 fish oil. So caffeine, I mean, we know we most people take caffeine on a regular basis through coffee, through green tea. Uh, in this situation, I mean, if you don't like to drink coffee, if you don't like to drink green tea and things like that, you just add a caffeine supplement. It does seem to improve muscle soreness as well as omega-3, which has a whole uh, range of health benefits we can just uh, use. And if you take about two to three grams of EPA plus DHA per day, which is kind of a standard dose now, if you're looking to get the most benefits out of it. So I would highly, highly recommend adding these two supplements. I mean, caffeine, I mean, depends. I mean, some people are super responsive to it, like myself, if I drink any coffee, if I have any caffeine post noon or 1 p.m., I won't be able to fall asleep at night. And it's crazy how uh, my response is to caffeine. And some people also respond in a very poor way, in a negative way. So look at your response when it comes to caffeine. With fish oil, you don't really have to worry that much, except, of course, you wanna make sure that you store the fish oil supplement in the fridge or something like that, where it doesn't get oxidized and, and store it in a very nice way so it doesn't get exposed to the sun where a lot of people make that mistake and they buy these huge packages of like thousand pills and caps and then they just put it in the sun so it just gets ruined after like a day or two and they keep drinking oxidized things which is not really good for you so you want to make sure to really do that uh, basic care of the supplement when you take the omega-3s uh, but when it comes to caffeine look at your individual response I mean maybe you want to take a smaller dose maybe just rely on a little bit of tea but it can help reduce muscle soreness so those are the four ways uh, the description in below the video will contain the key points as well if you want to summarize this and all the research studies as well who are uh, for you guys who are looking to dig deeper into this. So hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what's your experience with muscle soreness? Do you have a lot of soreness? Which kind of muscle group? That's something I'm curious. Which muscle group does get sore the most in your training? So let me know in the comments below. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.